Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another repot with me. So I have a few things to pot here. I think pretty much everything is philodendron. I have the hybrid of Billy Tai and Atabapoense. I have a green philodendron scandens here. I have a Brazil that is in bad need of a repot. And then I have my Cardinal Beauty hybrid that was in my last plant haul. So one or two plant hauls ago, I actually mentioned these plant pots that I bought off Amazon. I did link them, but I will relink all of these today. I bought the sizes small, I have medium and I have large and they all actually come with these drip trays. They have drainage in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but they have really good drainage and little drip trays. So I'm gonna use these so that they're all uniform. And before I actually start, I did put something on my Instagram story, basically asking you guys if there's anything that you wanna ask me for this video and I will talk about it while I repot. You can't see him, but he's there. Mark is off frame. I'm looking at him now. <laughs> Hi guys. And he's going to read me the questions because I won't be able to touch my phone or pretty much anything because I will have my hands in soil. So if you hear a weird ethereal voice, it's Mark, it's not me. Right, I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna start with this because it's big and I think I could use the space. There's nothing actually wrong with this. It's more, now I have matching pots. So I want this hybrid in one of these pots. And I also want to put the billetai in my last plant hole into one of these pots as well. So I'm just gonna take everything out of here and basically transplant it. I actually made this like fresh medium up like, I don't know, two weeks ago now, maybe. So I'm just gonna transplant the medium so it's pretty straightforward. I will pull out the little name tag. This is gonna make a mess. This is gonna make such a big mess. Ooh, it's got new roots from when I planted it. That's pretty awesome. Got new little white fluffy roots, oh my God. <laughs> I will go through the medium that I'm using, by the way, guys, in a minute. Just, I have fresh medium for these other ones, so there's no point really mentioning what's in here now. But this is a pretty easy little transplant on the go. I know it would be, as I say, it's fresh soil. I'm probably ready for a question. Fire me a question from uh, the question. Instagram. What was your first ever plant? Oh my God, it, like in my life? Yeah, so the first palm I've uh, ever had in my life that I can remember, I may have had something else prior, but I, I don't remember it, was probably the areca palm. I think that's how you say it, areca palm, areca palm. Also known as the butterfly palm, a palm, basically. Uh, it was my first plant, I don't know why, I just quite like the tropical vibe. I like palms, they remind me of being on holiday. Who doesn't want that? I think if I went on holiday now, I'd probably have a panic attack because can you imagine watering all these? which is a problem, to be honest. Like, I, yeah. I don't know what to do if I go on holiday. I, be honest, I have no plans to go anywhere anytime soon because everything will die. And if it doesn't die, I will just spend the entire time wondering if everything is gonna die. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have, probably have to hire someone to professionally come in and water them because they're so rare. If something yeah. dies, it's like, okay, well, I'll just get another one. Uh, no, I can't. So I guess that's a bit of a problem. I don't know. Is plant. there such a thing as someone like a professional plant waterer? But you get dog waters. You do. That's a, that's why I feel like you might be able to get plant waterers. Maybe. Oh, some soil left in that. I should have used it. Right. I think that's Billy done. Uh, oh, I'll actually put the support back in for this really quickly. Just keep saying Billy. Well, it's kind of a Billy. <laughs> what would it be if it was either way around? It'd be an Atabapa tie. Atabapa tie. Yeah. Atabapa. I can't. Atabapa I can't even say the original name of the plant, let alone that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's not going to happen, is it? Really, realistically. Right then. Don't have a name for this yet. I don't know if I want. I don't know. Does anyone do that? Do you name every plant? Do you name a few of the prominent ones? What do you name? Does no one name plants? Is it just me? <laughs> right. I think that looks wicked, I'll be honest. What do you reckon? Yeah, looks awesome. Good. We're now basically going to do the same thing, but with the billetai. I find the root systems on these, obviously I've only potted up one, but uh, I find the root systems on these like super, I don't want to say chunky, but very tuberous. What do you think brought about your love for plants? Oh. My love for plants. Well, I don't know. How does anyone start loving plants, really? I used to live up north in the UK. If anybody doesn't know where that is, I'm kind of talking about semi the country, maybe a town at best. And I moved to Manchester for my current job. Um, and there is no greenery here at all. And I've always liked plants, but I think it kind of spiraled when I moved here. And I guess I missed home and I missed the countryside. And I just thought, you know, I need some green. And then I needed a bit more green and then <laughs> Now I'm on YouTube, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just guess I needed some more green in my life. I'll quickly mention what I actually have in potting medium because I said I would for a fresh repot and I have here some coconut husk, I have some sphagnum moss and I do have some potting mix but I think mainly my aroids are gonna be in 
coconut husk and sphagnum moss. I do have a matching ball of moss here that I'm gonna use that my hair probably went in that. And some regular potting mix and I'm just gonna make whatever I think is right in terms of a blend. Cause I don't know if you know this, but I don't know what I'm doing. But I have a rough idea of what I'm doing, sort of. So I'm gonna start by lining the bottom with a mixture. Well, to be honest, I'm not even gonna use a mixture. I'm just gonna use coconut husk mainly just to make sure that really does drain better. Oh, go on. Do you mix your own soil? Yes. Yes, I do. What's the mix? <laughs> the mix is sphagnum moss, qua. I don't know, it's coconut husk, right? But it's pronounced, it's not pronounced, it's spelled C O I R. Is that qua? Because I feel like you would say that qua. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I actually don't know how to say that. Well, it's not koya. Koya. It's, it can't be. It can't be. Coil? Coil? It's got it's gotta be qua, surely. I'm putting in a tiny bit of party mix with this by the way, but it's honestly it's it's almost negligible. It's just to give it some nutrient because the coconut husk I don't think really has anything in it and the moss doesn't either. These are pretty moisture absorbent, so it just means that it'll keep moisture, but it will kind of draw it away from the roots a little bit. Like it's not gonna be waterlogged because we don't want that. That's a really good mix. I'll try and show you kind of what's going on with it. You can see the moss is infused with the coconut husk and literally like a tiny bit of potting soil. I'm just gonna keep going in with more qua. 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 I really hope that's how you say it or I'm making a massive fool of myself. Right, I've got enough for the bottom there. So usually when you repot houseplants, or at least I think, you put a third in the bottom and await your plant. So let's just take a look at little Billy here. Try my best to push him into position and just start packing some of this in. It would be ideal to mix it first, I think, wouldn't it? But oh, 100% mix it first. I'm just, I don't have a lot of space. Things. Yeah, I have this in one big container and I have the moss in one big container and if I don't go through it all, obviously I'm gonna store it. So I didn't really wanna mix it. Um, so that's why I'm not mixing it. But feel free to mix this in a bowl. Um, also, because people might not be familiar with this stuff, it's very inexpensive to be honest. I think it's used for reptiles, is that right? Yes. Sphagnum moss can be used in, I don't know, reptile enclosures, so can coconut husk. So you can actually find it at pet stores, but you can also find it on Amazon. And I will link basically the type of stuff that I get from Amazon so you can find it. And I honestly recommend a mix like this for aroids generally. I've never used it on any other type of house plant, so please don't, you know, come for me if it doesn't work. I only really would recommend this on our rides right now. If I find out something else different, I will let you know and I will update you. And what's good? I'm gonna get some more moss. I get scared to like pat it down a little bit. Cause I'm like, oh. Are you gonna have enough? Of quoi? Um, debatable. You've used about half of that already. Yeah, it's a bit of tie though, isn't it? He's a little bit wonky, but he's planted straight. I think it's just, you know, what he wants right now. Get my little drainage cover. <laughs> He's all wonky, look. He's still cute. He's just really wonky right now. He'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, I'll try and put him down here. Oh, no. Do you think you can grab this from me? Yeah, of course. Kind of struggling a bit. Right, we've got one more of the newer plants and then I'm repotting two old ones. So I'm just gonna get straight in with this absolute queen of a plant. There's some more sphagnum there, but I'll just leave it for now because I have fresh, not that it really needs fresh. I could use the same, but I'm not gonna. That is, that's huge. Look at that, man. Wow. Again, with it being a philodendron, I'm gonna use a, literally exactly the same as what I just did. I'm gonna mix qua or coconut husk with more moss. Oh my god. If you if any of you out there are wondering whether to get one, please get one. I was like a cereal overwater until I bought one and they're so inexpensive. They're like what? 8 English pounds, 10, 12 dollars maybe. Maybe even less than that. You can get some of them for 5 pounds and to be honest, they all do the same thing. They have a little slider on them where it's like 
light pH and water. Honestly, I only ever use mine for moisture, but I mean, you could use it for the other two things. I just don't feel that I need to, to be honest, but you absolutely should get one. Again, I will link mine in the bottom, although I think most of my videos now, I've actually got a, like a, a section in my video description that basically just has a link to everything I use that's plant related, like my plant pots, my moisture probe, my humidifiers. Pretty much every video I think now has that in. So if you guys are wondering on anything I use, you can probably find it in nearly any video, but I will obviously make sure it's in this one as well. But yeah, I would 100% buy a probe. You will be amazed at how much you've probably been overwatering, maybe even underwatering, I suppose, but mainly overwatering. Um, I've never killed a plant, just gonna be honest. True? True. True. I've never killed a plant, and honestly, I think if I didn't have that moisture probe, I probably would have. Oh, my little butt hurts. Oh, my little feet hurt as well. You know, whoever decides to do these repotting videos and have like a glass of vino, can someone please tell me logistically how that works? Because I would love a glass of wine. I don't know what time it is, but it's Saturday. What time is it? Do you know? I haven't got a clue. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 6.24 p.m. 6.24 p.m. A, a glass of wine would be really nice, but I honestly don't understand how people do this. I don't get it. I, there's no way. Ooh, that's quite, that's quite wet. Because I've not long uh, mixed this. Oh no, it's all on my legs. I'm gonna squeeze it out because I know for a fact it's come from a pan of water. So I'm just making sure it's not too wet for all of this. I'm just gonna squeeze the majority out of it. I mean, I'm absolutely covered. I know you said that you didn't think I was making a mess, but <laughs> <laughs> wrong. <laughs> oh. That's that. Pretty wet, isn't it? It is wet with a H, my friend. Wet with a H. Step two, <laughs> pot. Le plant. This is a lot of root. It's the right size for the plant, you can tell. Slightly on the small side, but I think that's always safer when you get a new plant to uh, pot in something smaller just to make sure the roots don't get over overwatered, you know. So you don't think the pot's too small? No, they don't. Even though there's a lot more to No, I think it'll be all right. If it's not all right, then, you know, in a few weeks, I'm sure we can move it, but it's more right now. You know, this isn't the like forever pot, but this is like the pot for right now. <laughs> You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not like Mr. Right, it's Mr. Right now. Isn't that what people say? Well, some people say. The cardinal beauty is just flirting with A little bit, yeah. It dabbles, you know. It's interested. It just doesn't know. It's just not On sure. On the commitment side of it, it's not really sure if it wants. I mean, it probably wants, but does it need? You know? God, I talk so much shit. <laughs> Uh, we'll get through this guys. Two more plants, stay with me. Two more plants. Are there any plants that you love but you're too, too intimidated by the care to buy? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, right, I love a challenge. I love it. If I'm not pushing myself too hard, then I'm not pushing myself at all. So I think there's pretty much nothing that I wouldn't try. I don't think I would try something with like light requirements that I didn't have because that's just silly. Like I'm not gonna, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to take care of that. But in terms of like humidity, temperature, all of that jazz, I'm all about that. You guys have seen my humidifier. Like I came to party, do you know what I'm saying? A very humid, wet party. I wonder how many people tell me in the comments, oh my God, what are you mixing? Why, why you do this? This is wrong. It'll be fine. All my other plants are planted up in this. Pink princess, you name it, it's in here. It's love and life. So I'm confident, guys. I know you might think I'm nuts putting moss in things, but I'm quite confident. Oh, apparently, pro tip, apparently this moss, you can grow cuttings in it instead of just in water. Uh, so that could be something you might want to try. I think aroids really, really love being in a bit of sphagnum moss when they grow, like when they root. Oh, oh boy. Oh, that's nice. Is it looking good, is it? Yeah. Is it like a hand wipe? Yes. I think I would love one. And I also may need you to take this ratchet, dirty plant. And I also need more qua. Oh. Right. Let's do the same again. This feels like it's too big, but I actually don't think it is because I think it'll grow in just fine. It's gonna look a bit weird. It needs space to grow. Oh, that looks fine. What am I even worried about? Does that look proportionate to you? Yeah, it does to me as well. So 
just to let you guys know this is a little bit root bound probably isn't gonna be good this oh my god this is grown in i can actually feel it this ain't coming out ho oh, ho oh, i'm gonna out the yeah that's pretty standard though yeah if something is yeah if something is pop bound that's how you tell it needs repotting a lot of the time so i'm just gonna kind of squeeze it and hope that this actually comes out that's in there that's not coming out let me just because i might have to snip the uh, plastic dude it's not oh, oh. got it Oh, shit. Wow. Yep, yeah, that's what, you know, a pot bound, root bound plant looks like, kids. So I'm just gonna do my best because apparently all you need to try and do is loosen this, but I actually don't think it's gonna loosen without me breaking all the root. I'll break it up slightly, but I just don't wanna tear all these roots. Yeah, that's all right. It is a bit deeper than maybe you'd want for a hanger, but I mean, the other one's too small. I don't think this is gonna cause any problems. I really don't. It'll be fine. Ooh, running out. <laughs> Yeah, do the last question, please. How are you able to let the plants go? Ooh, okay, so you must be referring to my anti-holes or unholes or declutters or whatever you want to call them. I guess there's a lot of plants that I bought for myself when I started like getting into plants, the period that I mentioned in my story time where you basically go crazy. I feel like I bought a lot of plants because, you know, this plant is indestructible. This plant lives in the dark. And I bought them for that reason, not because I actually wanted the plant. Like I wanted to make sure I could take care of it. Oh dear, that's coming along as a friend. So I guess I just bought things on recommendations on Pinterest and it wasn't necessarily things that I like. And I guess the more plants you buy, you find out what you're into. Like I used to be into Calathea a lot, now I'm into Aroids. To be honest, if I get rid of, for example, I got rid of the Golden Pothos, if I wanted another one, I could get it. It's a more common plant. With the limited space I have in here, if I get a rarer plant in, I'm obviously not gonna get rid of that and keep a Pothos. I can just pick up a Pothos at a later date if I really, really want one. So I'm just trying to kind of prioritize the ones that I really couldn't get anywhere else. I picked plants, not for the wrong reasons, just not for the reason that, you know, I loved the plant or whatever. But that has been long, long, long overdue a repot. Hopefully it'll grow a little bit better. I wouldn't say it was leggy. Well, it is a bit leggy actually. But I feel like this is more winter growth than anything else. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let's put that there. Thank you. All right, bonus question. Yeah. How old are you? Heh <laughs> heh. How old do you think? <laughs> I'm actually 29 years old. I actually turned 30 this year in October. I don't know what you guys were expecting to hear there, but normally I think people would say I look younger than I am. Typically, yeah. Yes, typically. What, what do you mean by that? Oh yeah, I can't even go to a supermarket and buy a bottle of wine with like, I don't know, the night's you know dinner like fish and vegetables or something i can't even buy a bottle of wine with it because they will accuse me of being underage unless i have identification and even when i give them identification a lot of the time they kind of look at me as if to go am i going to let you get away with it like it's not real and i'm just like excuse me i'm a grown lady how dare you <coughs> how very very dare you oh this is not effective by the way you need a wet wipe Ugh. i don't think it's i'm trying to get the thick off though next question did you say you had two for me yeah, how did you get into the gaming industry? Ooh, how the hell did I get into the gaming industry? Well, for starters, I studied it. I've always loved uh, video games, shall we call them, since I was a small child. Um, I guess I just grew up with video games. I grew up with computers, all of that sort of stuff. And I, long story very short, I studied at a university. I actually specifically studied games programming. So not even just regular software engineering. I actually went full force and I suffered a lot of criticism from people around me telling me that you'll never get a job in games, don't do it, but HA! Joke's on you. <laughs> so yeah, I studied that and then I went on to do a master's, uh, master's degree in basically the same thing. So I had a bachelor degree and then a master's degree in the same thing. And while I was studying my master's, the company I work for now, which is White Paper Games, they contacted me and basically said, would you like to work for us? Because I had quite a, I would say a decent portfolio on the internet, would you say? So basically they contacted me and wanted me to work for them, but I said, look, I can't, I'm doing a master's. I paid a lot of money for it. But as soon as I finished my master's, I kind of emailed them and went, hey, how you guys doing? Totally looking for a job. And they were like, okay. And now I work for White Paper Games here in Manchester and I moved to Manchester for this job. It's been a journey. It has been a journey. Yeah, it has. It really, really has. If you had asked me a year ago, you know, what's your ideal Saturday night? You're like, mate, Spagnum Moss. <laughs> <laughs> and some qua. And some qua. 
It's not really, you know, what I would have thought I would have been doing. And uploading a video of me playing with Moss, basically, and putting it on the internet, it's not really where I thought my life would go. But, you know, here we are. So I think I'm done now. I don't know how long this video is. I think we've been doing this about an hour. I actually still have more things to pot up that I'm not going to show you on camera for reasons. Yeah, thank you very, very much for watching this chat repot play with moss with me. Uh, and I guess I will see you in the next video whenever that is. Bye, guys. Say bye. Bye. Bye.